Hey. Hi, Haley. How are you doing? I'm I'm good. How are you? Not too bad. Are you home? Yeah, get yes. to me. <laughs> That's kind of nice. Yeah, we got a good was, setup. It wasn't clear to me that if I should have sent that to Angela, but now it looks like you and David do that all without yes. Angela having to. Okay. We're self-sufficient now. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's fine. What's the word on when people can start having meetings? Um, likely not until I think it's mid-July that it expires. And then Paul will have to reassess, you know, if they want to continue doing virtual or ship to in-person. Yeah, yeah. Have you had any further thoughts about um, skipping the July meeting? Um, I'm not sure. I think I'm going to, you know, we can bring it up today and kind of see where people, how they're feeling. Um, it might be kind of nice to regroup. I think we can do some homework uh -huh. for July, even if we don't meet. Yeah. Good. Mila's on early. Yeah. And just so everybody knows, we are recording now. Oh, okay. You started it already. Okay. It actually did that automatically. It usually gives me the option. So mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know if the setting is different, but, but I will announce that again at five. Hi, Mila. Good afternoon. Can you hear us? I can hear okay. you. Oh, okay. hi, Rosemary. How you. are you? Good. How are you? Okay. Good. <laughs> you think, huh? Yes. <laughs> well, it's nice to see you on early. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. What? Well, it's it's five o'clock meeting, right? Yes, exactly. Well, it's five minutes to now. I think at least I have about four minutes to. Okay. Yeah. So, are you in Amherst now? No, not yet. I was just there. I'm back and forth, back and forth still. I don't. That's I don't a, know. That's it's a long, long trip, ride. isn't it? How it long? Is. Yeah. Four to six hours. Ooh. Huh. I I did it one time for four and a half. And guess what? I got a ticket. <laughs> I got a ticket for going 95. I will never do that again. Yeah. Wasn't worth it. And then it ended up taking you longer anyway because you had to stop for a ticket. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, I, I It was in Mawa, New Jersey. And every time my friends go through Mawa and said, Mila, you're wanted here. <laughs> Hi, Dennis. Hi there, how are you? I'm good, how about you? Very well, thank you. Nice good. to see you. In your Irish shirt. <laughs> One might say that. <laughs> how are things going? Uh, pretty good, yeah. Good, glad to hear it. Weather's good, that's for sure. Gorgeous day. Yeah. It sure is. Didn't we start out that way. But... No, but we needed that rain. Oh, yes. The pollen has been true. awful. Absolutely. I see they had a water restriction in um, in Northampton. They weren't yeah, I was really surprised people. about that. Mm -hmm. Why yeah. is that? Uh, lack of because, water? Yeah, lack of water. Mm -hmm. Oh, my. The Mill River was running low. Wow. So the rain was very welcome. That's good. Um, I did get an email from um, Karen who said that she, her husband had an appointment in um, mm. Springfield, but she expected to be to the meeting. She might be a little bit late. I wondered if I should have called Greg. Sometimes he needs a reminder. Maybe I'll do that. Hi, Jack. I'm calling because I'm 
running a little bit late. Okay. And I will be there. Perfect. Okay. okay. Look forward to seeing you then. Bye. <clears throat> Jacqueline's running a little bit late. Hi, Greg. This is Rosemary. Just oh, here. Rosemary, he's on. Starting, so we hope to see you. <laughs> we were calling you, Greg, to tell you. <laughs> so if you get a voicemail from Rosemary, that's why. Ah, uh, yeah. There's Greg. Okay, that was my voice message. Sorry. <laughs> Hi, Terry, and I hope you are in good shape this time with this with the Me too. Um, internet. Me too. Hello, hello, hello. I hope I'll be fine. All right. Fingers hello. crossed. Good. And just a reminder, everyone, the camera is rolling. We are all being recorded. And... Hi, Linda. Hi. <laughs> Back. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Okay. So, Jacqueline's going to be a bit late. Christina sometimes comes late because of her work schedule. And Karen might be a little bit late. So I think we will go ahead and get started. Looks like we have a quorum anyway, so that's good. Okay, pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, GLC 30A18, this meeting of the Council on Aging is being conducted by remote participation. Meeting is also being recorded. Please unmute your um, yourselves while I do the roll call. Greg Bascom. Unmute Greg. Greg Bascom. Oh, okay. We see he's here. Um, Terry Carr. Here. Chad Fuller. Karen Helfer. Mila Montemayor. Here. Christina Sharbai. Jacqueline Smith Crooks. And Dennis Vandal. Here. Okay. Okay, now you can <laughs> mute yourselves. <laughs> Greg, we did, you had your uh, mute on, but we see you are present. <laughs> I had more than my mute on. I just disappeared and I didn't see any of you. So it took oh. me a few seconds to get back, but I did hear you. <laughs> you. Okay, great. Okay. Um, this is a time for public comment. Hi, Karen. Hi. Nice to see you. Nice to see you back. Um, if it, is there's anyone in the public, do you see any participants in the public, Haley? No. Okay. So there will be no public comment at this time. So let's go ahead and get started with the um, agenda then. Haley, would you give us an update on um, senior services activities and- Yes, of course. Um, so for the month of June, we averaged about 519 visits, um, which is about 23 people a day. That's up slightly from April, which is a really great sign. It means people are enjoying the new offerings. Um, 
really pleased to see that attendance is up and that we have some new activities for people to partake in. Um, it seems kind of like our peak days right now um, are Fridays, and I think that's partially because we've been doing a computer basics workshop with some professors at UMass. So we've got about 10 or 11 people enrolled in that, and it's a six week course. Um, coming up, we have uh, next Tuesday, uh, June 14th at six o'clock, we will be joined at the Bank Center by Chief Livingstone and Earl Miller. They are going to talk about how each department is different. So how the, the Crest Department is different from the Police Department, but how they're both working together for public safety. Um, and then on Thursday, the 16th, we'll be welcoming in some of the fire department for a coffee and, um, you know, and chat. And then that Friday afternoon, Mindy Dom will be at the Senior Center at 1230 for pizza and music bingo. Okay. So that should be really fun. And we'll also be joined by our District 2 counselors on June 20th at 10 a.m. And then APD will be coming in on June 20th third at 1030. Uh, they're bringing the comfort dog and we're going to host them for coffee and donuts. Um, so that's a couple of things that are coming up throughout the month of May. And um, does anyone and, have any? Haley, how can we know uh, when these things are happening? Are they because they won't, the senior spirit won't be going out with that information. It has. So this is all contained in the May and June edition of the senior spirit, which is up on the town website, or you can request a copy to be mailed to you from the senior center. Um, so definitely if you, if anybody needs a copy, I'm happy to send it out. Um, we definitely want people to come in and enjoy what we have. And then looking ahead to the summer, we have musical performances coming back. We've got lots of arts and crafts. Um, we'll have presentations on black holes and dinosaurs and be inviting in a, a live butterfly demonstration for seniors and their grandchildren. Um, so lots more to look forward to. Um, and then we continue to work on the Agent Dementia Friendly Project. We just had our first listening session on housing a couple weeks back. I thought that was really well attended. Um, I'm, I think we had maybe 40 people. That sounds about right. And we had some really good conversation. Um, we heard lots of folks uh, concerned about how are they going to make home modifications? How can we afford to age in place, um, high taxes, um, and just needing more housing options for older adults in town. So that was really good. And then on the flip side, you know, we heard that people enjoy having access to transportation. There's a rich arts and cultural scene here in Amherst. Um, you know, it's, again, it's very bucolic, uh, so not all negative. Uh, we'll be doing our next session uh, by remote participation. So we'll be talking about social participation, technology, and civic engagement on Monday, June 27th, and that's at 2.30 on Zoom. Um, if you don't have the link, I can send it out, or it's also on Engage Amherst for people. And then coming up in June, July, and September, we'll be talking about transportation, public safety, and we'll do a Spanish-speaking session, um, you know, respectively. Does anyone have any comments or questions about the Agent Dementia Friendly Project? Mm -hmm. Will you be at the farmer's market this Saturday? I with will be. With flyers or do you just yes. want? I go with flyers. Uh, we have flyers in English and Spanish and I'm there from usually about nine to noon um, and sometimes joined by the, the fire department to have a little backup in, in promoting these events. But I think that the, the first one was was pretty slow but I'm hopeful that now, you know, more things are growing. There should be more harvested that people can sell at the farmer's market and then the, the turnout should be much higher. Um, going fairly early in May is not always a good call. Mm -hmm. um, there's uh, an update on the CDBG application. So I have spoken with Paul, what's his last name? Um, it's Paul Berman over at the PDTA. We will be getting uh, one of their retired vans. It has the capacity to seat eight um, or six people in two wheelchairs. So that was a huge boon to us because we don't have the wheelchair accessible vans right now. Um, we will have to pay for a new sticker that's going to expire in July, but that um, you know is well worth the cost of getting the van donated to us. Um, and then after that, we'll be able to do more of the, the medical rides that we have been doing, start planning some trips, places. Um, the RFP for the CDBG application itself has not yet been published. So again, I'm still not sure what the actual 
um, application requirements are going to be, but I'll likely pivot um, to applying for funds for programming uh, instead of the transportation. Now we won't need to spend money on that because we'll have gotten it through PBTA. Um, any questions on CDBG? Uh, did anyone go to engage Amherst and enter anything for the CDBG grant um, request? I did, actually, I did enter something and I mm -hmm. said that it would be good to have better sound mm -hmm. um, in our rooms. Mm -hmm. That's a good thought too. If that, um, that could actually tie into programming. We could maybe do like a, a, co a combination there. Um, I haven't seen the report. So the, the CDPG advisory committee should be putting out a report on what was asked for by the public, but I haven't seen that posted online either. Well, it could be if one or two other people put that in, it would get a little mm -hmm. bit more attention Definitely. by the committee. Definitely. Um, and so one of the program areas that I really want to focus on I've, um, is, is the memory cafe. I think I've mentioned this a couple of times. I've actually spoken with a number of people in the community who are really struggling with having a a parent who has Alzheimer's. In fact, I spoke to one couple who not only does the father have Alzheimer's, but the son has his own long term. Um, he has a brain injury, essentially. So he has his own limitations now. And so the daughter in law is caregiver times two. And it's incredibly stressful for them. They weren't sure really where to go or how to um, you know, how to function. Um, you, know, you go from two incomes down to one and then you're a caregiver for another person. Um, so I think that we really need to start creating some programs that are going to be suited to people who have memory challenges and their caregivers and see what we can do to increase the, the supportive programs that we offer. Um, Helen has a wonderful caregiver group once a month, um, but I know that before the pandemic, we had uh, grants for massages, um, you know, different ways that caregivers can take respite. Um, and so we'll, we'll definitely need to look at reinstating those. Um, so when you get the next edition of the Senior Spirit newsletter for so for July and August, there's going to be a call um, for our readers to join a committee on uh, planning a memory cafe. A lot of the research shows that you should really involve people who have dementia or Alzheimer's and their caregivers in the, the, the planning process. Um, so I'm going to put a push out to get people to join that committee. I would really love for someone on the Council on Aging to be a part of that as well. I think it would be great to have a presentation from the COA. Um, you know, as we're talking about how do we better meet the needs of this segment of the population. Is there anyone who would be interested in serving on a committee like that? You know, these would be probably a monthly meeting, um, you know, Zoom or in person, we'll kind of have to see what the, the participants want, because really this should be a participant driven uh, group. But, um, you know, generally a small time commitment and it would really help have an impact on the state of programming at the senior center. I don't see any takers. Yeah, I'd like I mean, to. It's not bad, I swear. It'll be, a, it'll be a great group. You know, a lot of memory cafes, if you're not really familiar with the concept, um, typically they feature, you know, some kind of activity, sometimes music or therapeutic painting, something in like a group setting. A lot of times there's, you know, a meal, a light meal prepared afterwards, or even just people can sit around and talk and just say, you know, hey, I'm experiencing this and having this challenge at home. What are you, how do you recommend I handle that? Uh, we can invite in speakers from UMass, from the Alzheimer's Association. And Linda, you have your hand up. No. Terry. Oh, no. oh Terry, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Terry. I saw the Terry's. Yeah, right. <laughs> I can help as long as I don't have any conflicts. Okay. That would Once be great. I find out the time. Perfect. I'll put your name down because it'll okay. be a good effort. And like I said, I, this is the one thing I've been hearing pretty much since I started that people are wanting and needing. Uh, yeah, Thank you, great. Terry. It's excellent. I think representation from the council is very important. And uh, so you can mm -hmm. keep the council informed and that's right. progress as well, which is yeah. important. That's, that's what we're here for. 
Exactly. You know, the, the day to day kind of stuff. I know not everybody has the time commitment for that, but it definitely, I think a good council on aging works more harmoniously for the senior center when you kind of have a feel for who are the people coming in and attending programs. You know, instead of just having this abstract idea of what a senior is or what a senior center should be, who are the people who are actually going and having a cup of coffee in the afternoons? I've talked to a couple people now who walk over from Clark House and they, you know, they might sit by themselves and play solitaire or they might join a puzzle. Um, there, there's a lot going on and I think it's hard to really anticipate what their needs are if you're not seeing it for yourself. Mm -hmm. um, so anytime someone is able to come help, even if it's just for a one off program, you know, like we'll need help coming up in July and August, we'll do ice cream social hours, you know, every Friday. Um, if somebody has an afternoon where they can donate an hour of their time, help us scoop ice cream, that is a great way to get to know your seniors because they are gonna, <laughs> my first time having an ice cream social, I was told I didn't scoop enough ice cream. And let me tell you, you better make sure you give people enough ice cream. Do not skimp <laughs> out on that. Um, so yeah, it is, it is really important to get a little bit more uh, volunteerism. Yeah, I think it would be very important for everyone to take a little time and hang out at the senior center and see what's going on, sit and talk with people and get a feel for what, what the needs are and what people are doing and wanting and enjoying. That's right. And actually today I had a great conversation with someone I'd never heard this term before, solo aging. People oh. who have, who are either not married or divorced or do not have children, or maybe their children are estranged from them or have moved away. And how do they prepare for, you know, not just end of life, but if I, if my circumstances change in five years, how do I help myself in that situation? Because I don't have a circle of caregivers at home, you know, and I have a, I have a good gut feeling that that is, she is not alone um, in mm -hmm. feeling those, those pressures. Mm -hmm. Well, that could be a very good program to um, establish, have, have someone come in and talk about that topic. So. Okay, well, thanks, Haley. And um, did you wanna say anything um, about the role of the cons Council on Yes, Aging? it did. So I don't wanna take up too much time because I know that we really do need to focus on our leadership and on our team building. So it's important to me that we have ample time to discuss that. But um, I do wanna just give you a little bit of a frame of reference for the history of Councils on Aging. Um, you know, these boards were established in the 60s, you know, as a way to help senior centers kind of coordinate their operations. Um, you know, I think the Mass General Law describes it as coordinating programs. Uh, you know, a senior center is meant to coordinate programs designed to meet the needs of the aging. Um, and like, how do you do that? So you, COAs are usually involved in setting policy. Now, whether that's kind of your your day to day operations, you know, helping formulate what are the golden rules of your senior center, um, you know, behavioral expectations, but it can also just mean programming, evaluating programs. Um, you know, doing studies on what are the types of programs needed at your senior center and then establishing guidelines for how to implement those programs. Um, you know, a lot of seniors uh, councils on aging focus on education, you know, making sure that the, the board is up to date on math state law, that the board is able to educate the public on senior center operations and senior needs. Um, those are some of the key hallmarks of what a board should be doing. And I think sometimes you know, there's so much to tackle that it can kind of seem like where where do we start, but I think it's really important for this board and the here and now you know you have a you have a new director. And we have a new avenue, uh, you know, we can start new visions create new programs and initiatives, um, but we really need to take a critical look at what are the services that we're offering, you know. Uh, you know, what are we offering? You know, I hope my hope is that everyone on this council would be able to tell me what are the programs that we do in a given day that you could without looking at it, you know, without looking at the newsletter that if I said, oh, it's a Monday, what type of programs do we have that you would be able to say, okay, well, we do arthritis exercise and we do mind dancing or on Tuesdays we do healthy and bones and balance and that's one of our best programs people really seem to like that because it's at a, a low level and it doesn't require a lot of physical activity you can do it at any age um and I'm not I'm not sure 
if everyone can. And that's okay, because I think we can work on it. But I think it's really important for this council and as we onboard new members, because I'm sorry that Rosemary is leaving, but that will happen after this meeting, um, that we make sure that we all know what it is that we offer so that we can promote it accurately, right? If we don't know what are the programs and services, we can't say, well, we need this because we don't have that, that deep understanding. Um, so I would really like to see this board, again, take some time, come by the senior center. I'll give you a tour, I'll go over all the programs. Um, you know, we really have an opportunity here to, to do a lot of good, but we have to get that baseline down first. Mm -hmm. And that's what I want people to be thinking about as we talk about leadership and as we talk about team building. Mm -hmm. Yes. The, yes, Chad. Actually, that feed, Oh, uh, did you have a question, Chad? Yes. Um, I would um, offer that right back to Haley and say, um, you know, during your presentation or maybe halfway between the monthly meetings, um, the board would get a report. Uh, so many people attended such and such program. Uh, blank is a new program. Blank is a program that we dropped. Because, you know, we really do work together. You're our staff and we're your board. And so it's about um, how we do things together. It's not about Definitely. one or the other. But I think that would be helpful. So are you okay. saying to do that outside of the director's report? Because at the beginning of my presentation, I did talk about what were our service statistics, what new programs we had coming yep. out and what was, yeah. Yep. So that yep. is definitely a part of what I, I aim to cover at every, um, you know, with every director's update. But if there are specific things that you want to know, like how many people came to an exercise class, you know, let me know that ahead of time. And then I can prepare those numbers for each council meeting. You know, I'm happy to give as much information on senior center operations as you want to ask if it's if it's how many meals if it's how many people exercised if it's how many people came and enjoyed music I can be more than happy to provide that just let me know what it is that you are looking for in that report. Would you see that that would be um, valuable information. Oh, absolutely. Okay. I mean, you know, the, the senior center does a yearly annual report to the EOEA where we do outline, you know, activities like that. Um, so this would just be kind of taking that, you know, that report apart and doing it as a, a month, you know, an ongoing feature. And, you know, we can even do comparisons if you want to know how many people came this month versus that month last year. You know, those are all things that we can look at as we're kind of talking about the future of programming, because it's important to understand what's worked well and what hasn't really worked well. Excellent, because that gives us trends, and then we know <laughs> that we need to support one thing or drop another thing. And uh, join um, in, please, and say something when you need. Oh, when it comes. Yeah, is there a sense from other people? Like, what are what are the areas of interest? Do you you care about how many meals we're doing, or you know, exercise is a popular one, right? Because those are those are popular programs that just about every senior center. Uh, you know, in Hadley, they have a tremendous showing uh, for their exercise programs. So do people have any other areas of interest that you, know, you might want me to talk about at each meeting? So I, I think if, if um, getting, going around, circling back to what you said, mm -hmm. Haley, about wanting us to know more about what's going on at the Senior Center, I think, I think um, what Chad just said is one way of us filling in the blanks. You know, we I can, for example, come and visit one day, but it's not mm -hmm. going to let me know. Mm -hmm. You know, how many people are going to this kind of. So I think it it's what you think the information we think. So I think if there are certain types of programming that we're considering adding or dropping mm -hmm. or something like that, saying here's the metrics. You know, here's how many people attended this type of programming, and this is why. I don't think mm -hmm. we should be doing this anymore. We're doing less of this. We should be doing more of that. Mm -hmm. I think that's the type of information that I would find helpful. Um, okay. Because I, I could perhaps visit and, you know, come and visit, but it's not going to let me know how many people are going to, how many people are attending each time. Mm -hmm. No, it's definitely good feedback. So, you know, again, I can definitely put together a more comprehensive support. It didn't seem like that was, um, something that you had in place before. You know, I've worked with councils where they wanted very detailed statistics on which programs 
you know, they that were in operation and what was the attendance for those. Um, but I would still encourage, and it doesn't have to be like a random day, but if people came to a program like that had a specific purpose, you know, again, like ice cream social, that's a great way to get that direct connection without feeling like, oh, I hope I come on a day when there's a lot of people here. I might, I oh might, yeah, you're good. <laughs> I might mention that um, Chad Haley did mention how many people have used the senior center um, this month, and I thought that was significant um, in the beginning of the meeting. I think it was 518. Did you say? And that was up. Uh, yep, 519. But that was still up from uh, April. We had a little bit less than that, so not significantly increased, but enough that it's a good trend. But in addition to Haley suggesting that maybe this program is not working so well and we should, you know, consider eliminating it, I think we need to be out in the community and talking to other people and other elders or at the senior center and seeing what people might like besides such as the memory cafe is such an excellent idea. And that's... Um, that's the kind of thing that we can also suggest if we see a program that we think others would benefit from. So it doesn't have to come just from Haley, but from, from us as well, because we're out in the community. And I think what Haley said is very important. Really, the purpose of the council is to advocate for the needs of older adults. and. Um, Part of that is, is looking at programs that are working and not working or that we see are needed and also educating the public and getting them to support um, what we're doing. So it, it's, it's a combination of things. It's not just sitting at a meeting once a month. I agree, this is Jack, agree. Jacqueline is here on the um, on the phone because she couldn't connect on the mm -hmm. internet. So that was her voice that you just heard. Yes, I, I think you make a very, very good point on both accounts or all accounts, and especially the cafe getting input from the people that we seek to serve and um, getting ideas, input such as ideas as to what they feel they need and they would desire. Because one of the things I see the council as being is a, a conduit. And um, we communicate only to uh, the town officials, but we, we have that open communication with them, with the people. Linda, did you have a question? Um, I, I didn't know if it's appropriate for me to uh, make a comment or not. I'll, I mean, I'll re hold and reserve if it's not appropriate time. Is it I think it's fine. Okay. Uh, I, I want to go back to it. I think Chad's suggestion, which I, I think is really a, a, a good one, and um, and just expand even the virtue, the values of of what he's proposing is. Um, you know, first of all, I, I tend to look at the world, not just both from my, what I hope is the interpersonal, but I have a data head also. And I think anything that begins to document what you've accomplished as, mm -hmm. you know, it, it not only becomes something it's for fundraising, it's for grant writing, it's for all that. So it, it's both for the immediate and for informational purposes in the immediate, but it also has long-term benefits. So I really think that it's good. I don't know what your capacity, the capacity is in terms of staffing, Haley. That I mean, obviously this kind of data gathering is you need help with. It's, you know, I mean, you may have it all set up and computerized, maybe it's already mm -hmm. there, but I could also imagine that you would need help in terms of uh, producing that. Um, and I wanted to add the other thing, which is, I hope that, okay, is, you know, you were talking about both the sort of the, um, 
making sure you're engaged with each mm -hmm. other at the senior center and the COA. And, and this is a really nice way to do it, it you know, in terms of uh, concretely people having uh, like on the COA saying, oh, look what I got and I've got new information and here it is, it, it, you know, is shared with me. And it keeps your attention on, you know, what's happening. And I think it would facilitate that what you were looking for also, which is, you know, a greater sense of what's going on, period. And uh, so, I, you know, I thought it was a great suggestion, Chad. And, um, you know, we struggle with it all the time organizationally, you know, so, but uh, I, I just wanted to say it has multiple value, I think. Oh, definitely. And, you know, just to your point, we, we utilize a system called My Senior Center, and it actually makes data tracking fairly easy. You know, you're, it's never going to be 100% accurate, but it's pretty close. Um, so, and if people are interested, I'd be happy to share some of the annual EOEA reports with you all, because those are where, again, we're, we have to submit numbers to the state every year. So we have to show the state, you know, how many people did we help through our supportive uh, social work services? How many meals did we distribute? How many people attended a, an arts program? Um, something like that. So I'd be happy to share maybe the last three years, because, you know, obviously with COVID, the number is going to be a little weird, um, but 20 19, 2020, 2021 would give you a fairly accurate sense of what is the most in need right now. And that would actually be pretty easy for me to pull together. Um, I can send that out tomorrow. Um, that's an excellent idea, Haley. I think everyone should have those reports. We used to get them up every year. And I think it's very beneficial to mm -hmm. see what programs and how many people are using the programs and the, the amount of people that come into the senior center. Yeah, because it's a lot. It's, it's amazing. Um, yeah. So that's a great idea. So anything else? Any other comments on that? Um, earlier, I sent you all a, um, I sent you a list of all the members of the council going forward for FY23. Um, and I also sent you a document on the committee structure that had been drawn up by um, our chair, Pat Rector, and with the help of some members. And it became part of the bylaws and was approved in May 2021. There are three committees, and I think you all um, probably had a chance to look at it and see what the role of the committees would be and what the role of the council is with regard to um, those committees. Um, so have a good look at it. We never really implemented that. There were not committees set up, partly because we had the council had been in such a state of flux, major flux. There were four vacancies on the board in June of 2021. Um, Pat resigned as chair. Mary, Mary Beth Ogilevich resigned as director of senior services. And so the start of fiscal 2022 was also met with a lot of challenges. We um, didn't have a leader, um, so we de developed a leadership team of two co-chairs and a vice chair. And then we finally filled some positions. We brought Karen Helfont and um, Christina Sharbai onto the board, which was wonderful. We had um, then Pat Rector left again. So um, the leadership changed again. We've just had a lot of ups and downs. Um, and finally, in April of this year, we completed our um, council with nine members when we brought on Dennis Vandal and Terry Carr. So it's now a fully nine member board for the first time in a couple of years. So there have been you know, numerous reasons why we didn't implement any committee structure. And of course, during all this time, Helen, we were without even the director of senior services. Helen McMillan was trying to be um, interim director and social worker. And, um, and then there was COVID. So it's been a tumultuous two years. 
a lot of um, missing pieces, a lot of missing people, and um, difficult to be organized. Thank goodness we have Haley now. <laughs> she came to us and she's been doing an amazing job. And um, even for the first few months, she had to work without an administrative assistant. So you know, it's been nonstop really. Uh, a year of instability, member vacancies, and so on. So maybe now the council can become a fully functioning body for the first time. And as for the first time in several years, let's put it that way. Um, and as you learned at the last May meeting, I will be leaving. So that does leave um, the leadership position in limbo once again. Um, Jacqueline will remain on the board, but not in a leadership position. So we have to think about what to do going forward. Um, there, is, there are some applicants for my position, so you should have a new member soon after my departure, which will be good. So have a good look at the committee structure when you get a chance. And um, for those of you, as I mentioned in the email, who are new to the board since last December, um, that information is all in, in your new member notebook. But some of you still have that great big thick member notebook with a lot of outdated material in it. And Pat and I worked very hard to revise and update that notebook. And um, it's in better shape now <laughs> and much smaller. So we will have copies for every member at the, um, in the senior center office. So bring your old big fat notebook and pick up a new member notebook. And it has, um, recommendations for how a council operates so is that available now rosemary um i have uh there is one in the office now and i will take in four more mila needs one and greg needs one and uh i guess that's it jacqueline i think jacqueline do you have one I, I found mine, but I don't have the updated content. Oh, okay. I, I, I have the, the binder and the old content. Okay, well, the you can bring the old one back because nobody wants that big fat thing sitting around. And the new one is much more concise. Uh, in fact, I had, it, was a, it was in a box for protection and I had forgotten that I put it in the box. Okay. Well, I will take them up to the senior center and, and you can pick those up anytime. Or Jacqueline, would you prefer I drop it off at your office or at your yeah. house? Okay, well, we can talk about that another so my, The answer is that they will be available next week? Oh, sure. Okay. Um, obviously, you know, we can um, boldly claim that this is a reorganization. Are you familiar with that term? Uh, no, I'm not. Okay, we are reorganizing the uh, Council on Aging. We have a new um, director. It's our staff member. We have new board members. Uh, we need to reelect. Um, you call it leadership. Uh, I, I kind of got confused when they changed to what uh, were we euphemistically calling the triumvirate, the three, instead of a chairman, a vice president and a secretary, we now have a three uh, tripartite leadership. This is what you call reorganization, which means that the, the board is changing. It's, it's redeveloping. Um, I would like to include the manual as part of what we review in our reorganization effort. Um, I don't know what you folks have done, but the, the old one was really unhelpful. It was yeah. a lot of fluff. And I have some things uh, in terms of organization development that I'd like to add. I think we should review it at some point. Um, if we're gonna really be a cooking board, a working board, 
um, we might form a subcommittee to do that. Or we might assign a specific individual to do that and report back to us. But I think the manual is, is pretty important. So that's, I'm not making a motion or anything. We can, we can talk about it further, but I think that's something that we should address as well. I think that's a great idea. Sorry and, to take, take the time, but this is how we operate and what's important to us. Mm -hmm. And um, it guides us in what we do and how we do it. Mm -hmm. And if we're having a reorganization right now, we should look at that too. Mm -hmm. Sorry to butt in, but that's just my strong feeling. It's not butting in, Chad. We're all in here for the discussion of, uh, uh, of how to do things going forward. And yeah. Haley, you might have something to add to the manual as well. I don't you know, I think I can take a look. So, um, yeah, let me take a look at that because the Mass General, the Mass Councils on Aging sends out a new director manual to to every senior center director, and they include a lot of information on councils on aging from a historical perspective to, you know, what are the different roles in your town government and how do you function within that. So, I'd be happy to take a look at that and you know see how, if we can mesh the two a little bit more. Mm -hmm. For, for the newest members, um, I know that you did get some documents from the town itself about open meeting law and um, uh, a various other uh, conflict of interest. And uh, so that is not part of our manual anymore because I think the town gives that out to new members. But I do, I did put in the manual the um, charter a copy of, of the town charter because i think that could be a nice reference for yeah. for some people at any rate yeah we will look through look through the manual chad and um see what you think i'd like to add something i like i like the suggestion i think it is very timely and very much um in order I, I would suggest uh, maybe a team of at least a couple of people putting it together so that maybe two sets of eyes be exhausted um, and can give, yeah, yeah, saying, you know, I think this and give suggestions. Great. Yeah, we could, I mean, we could definitely form a subcommittee. Yeah than anything, not in rewriting, but in editing. <laughs> now, other people's eyes might be perfect, but I say that uh, because if I were part of uh, the, the reorganization recording, I would certainly appreciate getting input from somebody. <laughs> Karen? Is there a thought about perhaps um, making it a, a online copy rather than a hard copy because it would be easier to update and distribute if it wasn't if it was in digital form rather than hard yeah copy. <clears throat> everything is online the documents are all online so i can s s sort of look at that and get that out good idea yeah that's a really good idea even just because that should probably go at some point on on our COA website, you know, a little mm -hmm. bit more of an outline of what our rules and regs. Actually, yeah, there are some papers that are in that manual that come from Executive Office of Elder Affairs, and that is not online, so mm -hmm. so that's a little bit problem. It's so it could all be scanned, so yeah. it's yeah. you know the possibility of making the manual actually online, so that when new members come on board, they can just have access to it. They could download it if they want to, or they could just access it online rather than having a hard mm -hmm. copy and doing that way. I don't know. Again, I think some people some people are more comfortable with the idea of working with things online versus paper and vice versa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as one whose uh, who's Gmail was recently hacked, I, I'm in that other little pouch uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> of yesterday, which is uh, get, having a hard copy. And I don't think that is asking a lot to have both um, mm -hmm. 
because I, you know, I had feared that I lost everything, but through some machinations, I seem to be reclaiming some of the information. Mm -hmm. And why somebody would want to hack my account is beyond me. I'm a paper person myself, so I like having hard copies as well, but um, I understand that um, I'm from a dinosaur generation. <laughs> Thanks to a bus. So, okay, well, um, so how do you propose going forward with this? Um, Chad, do you wanna work with a few other people and getting this going? Sorry, I stepped away for a second. Okay. Um, um, let's see, I move that we um, um, appoint uh, by volunteers, um, two people to um, review the COA board member manual. I additionally move that um, they complete their work by uh, September 30th. Okay. Do you want to be part of that group? Sure. Yeah. Two people. Someone want to work with Chad? How about you, Mila? <laughs> Are you asking me? Yeah, are you interested in working with Chad on updating the manual? Uh, I'll be happy to accept my schedule right now is, I don't know when I'm in and out mm -hmm. of Amherst. If I can do it long distance or wherever I am, I can do my part of it online and just send materials that way. Would that be acceptable? It depends on how much is online right now. Oh, yeah, and probably not most of it. Yeah. I, you know, I, I could we, I think that might be um, something to decide on before we ask people to volunteer. Um, look what they're getting into, mm -hmm. what they're volunteering for. The process. You mean, well, what they would be volunteering for would be to revise the manual. Right. Review. They would be doing it uh, online. Yeah, and not, not enough of it is online. I think we'd have to put some energy into scanning That's what I was thinking too. the documents. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. I would be glad to help with the editing, but I would have to download it because one, uh, in addition to the hacking, my vision isn't that great. So, well, we can get you the new manual for what we the have hard now. Copy, yes, yes, I would be, I would be willing to work with okay. you. Okay. 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 Um, Christina, you had a, a your hand up, and Linda also. Uh, Christina, go ahead. Yeah, I, I want to know what is the length of the manual? What are we talking about um, in terms of its length and its? Well, Christina, I gave I brought a copy to your home. Do you remember when you became yeah. a member? In the, so in the, in the, how many pages? Let's see. I have it. I have it. I can grab it. So what is your question if you're asking the length? You already know. Or not. Yeah, I didn't honestly. I don't know. I didn't know that that was a manual. What I it, know it, it includes the um, mission statement, the bylaws, the committee structure, mm -hmm. a guide for COA board members, expectations mm -hmm. of the board and director, mm -hmm. um, responsibilities and practices, an executive summary, a list of definitions and the town organization chart, that's all That's all online, of course. Mm -hmm. So it's just the, the things that come from the executive office of elder affairs that are not online. 
well, it's some of it... I, I think it's about 170 pages. Mm. Uh, but, you know, if people can use the senior center scanner. You know, I, I, my staff and myself don't have time to scan that length of a document, but we can certainly offer up the scanner if someone can come and make the copies. Um, and that, that's definitely within the realm of possibility. I can probably come in and do that one day. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, well to be, go ahead, Chad. I was just going to say she had a two part question. Hmm. What was the other part of your question? Uh, who, who, whose question? Christina. Christina. No, I, I, I got my question answered and I do have my manual available and it's accessible. Okay. I can just grab it and look at it. Okay. And Linda, you had a question. Unmute, unmute. Thank you, I'm sorry. Um, I guess I was wondering what the foundation is, sort of the authority source for when people are reviewing. How do you know you got it right? In other words, if you make it, if you're reviewing, is it based on, well, we don't do it this way anymore. We got to edit it because we, our practice has changed. Um, well, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm looking for when the subcommittee gets together, what is the foundation for, quote, authority uh, in terms of what is uh, the accurate material? Then in, embedded in that, I, I think what I hear you saying is you're forming, it's a governance committee um, because, I, I mean, your man probably comprised of its state policies, its city policies, its senior center policies. Somebody's got to be, there's a forum in which policies are proposed and then decided upon, and then they become part of the manual. And so I'm wondering how that process has worked in the past. And again, it goes back to, you know, what's the source, the authority by which the committee operates so that they know that they're editing in relation to what the policies are. Yeah, my no. my my um, motion was review, not edit or change. Right, but even review, you needed a standard by which to be. Well, to answer your question, the way it yeah. was done was things were just added, 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 continually added, never reviewed, never discussed, just additions. That's yeah. how we got 170 pages. 25 of them are the only relevant ones. Mm -hmm. And even with that, there's some things left out. Mm -hmm. Like what are the values and morals that we bring with us and apply to being a board member and mm -hmm. so on? And actually, Linda, the, um, the, there are not really policies in the manual per se. Um, it, they're really guidelines. They're, they're recommendations for how a council runs it's not they're not really policies per se i mean they're the bylaws and you know that kind of thing but um i'm not sure what you mean by policies per se so they are um they have a decision making that influences the way people behave and what they mm -hmm. do and so it sometimes say well it, you know it can even be around programs are the programs, I mean, you're assessing programs in relation to the mission statement, you know, usually that kind of thing is in a, in a manual, how do you make judgments about whether your, your programs and services are, are, mis, are aligning with your mission, but, um, and then protocols for how do you handle certain conflicts or communications or, public, you know, um, all all facets of the operation. I mean, I'm not looking for it to get into tedium, but I am saying when somebody reviews, whoever reviews it, it it's, it's based on what? You know, is it somebody made a decision individually a while ago that this is the way we should do it? And, and is that the way it's going to proceed? Um, how, do you, how do you evaluate whether the manual is accurate? Yeah. Go ahead, Chad. Okay. I, I want to say something that's standard operating procedure in, in uh, organization development. 
Let's take something like a human resource department. Uh, when they look at uh, a business, they look at it from two aspects. One is called the principles of practice, and the other is called the personnel policies. Um, in our um, organization, we have um, our bylaws. It may say something to the effect, the president shall arrange the agenda, period. Now, it doesn't have both the principles of practice and the personnel policies. One tells you what you're gonna do, the other tells you how to do it. Our, our, our um, document just says uh, what needs to be done. So the president can say, I, I arrange the agenda. Um, I have a, a certain um, program I wanna run and I'm not gonna let anyone get on the agenda that doesn't follow that program. So let me uh, arrange the agenda for a business of what we're going to discuss all about those items I want. And to me, that's not um, great. Uh, that's not what democracy is. So if I was going to review um, our document, I would put just what I've said. Do we want to do it this way? Do we want to go into more detail and say, through polling each and every board member, and asking them, uh, you know, if they have anything for the agenda, uh, and so on. So that's the kind of thing I'm trying to get at. I mean, that's really, I can't speak to anything that happened before I got here. But I can say as someone who has worked with other boards, a council on aging member can suggest a topic to be discussed at any meeting. That's the standard operating procedure that I'm familiar with. And in fact, on today's agenda, Greg had some really great topics that he wanted to discuss, and those are on the agenda today. Um, you know, I think as we're thinking about manuals and policies, the policies are driven by the senior center needs. The policies need to be driven by what do the seniors need in the community and what kind of programs are going to help them thrive. Um, so that's really where the, the focus should be, because that's got to be what drives the end unit. If we, if we don't know what seniors need, we don't know how to help them. We don't know how to advocate for them. We don't know what to do at the senior center that's going to best serve them. Um, so that's really got to be the main drive, um, I think. And definitely, I would love to be on the review panel. I think as director, that's definitely something that I should be involved in. Because again, I'm doing the day to day. I'm seeing the people who are saying we need a memory cafe or I don't have supportive services at home or I'm getting to a point where I'm not going to be able to drive anymore and I can't handle that. You know, how do we support that program and give them options so that they can stay in place? Um, I don't know if that totally answers your question, but you know, when, when I hear about where does policy come from, to me, it comes from the center and it comes from the seniors who go to the center. They're the ones that we're working for. So we've got to be always thinking about them and how do we best meet their needs. Mm -hmm. That's helpful. Good points. Yeah. Christina. Unmute. Yeah, I think we have to keep in mind, because I just grabbed my notebook, is that some of these, and I don't know if this is part of the manual. But I certainly agree with you that everything should be fashioned around the needs of the community that we're serving. This says a guide for COA board members, and it comes from the governor. And essentially, this one, Office of Elders Affairs, June of 2019. So there are things in this notebook that we don't have to revise. We just have to get a new one from the Office of Elder Affairs. If there is such a guide that was sent to us by the governor, Governor Baker and Elizabeth Chen, the secretary, then we need to ask for the new ones. And um, so apparently there are a standards of practice because the Council on Aging uh, is an offshoot of our government. Mm -hmm. So we do have a standards of practice and um, we just need to organize ourselves as a board, board organization. And if that involves um, rewriting our personal handbook or manual, whatever you wanna call it, 
then that's okay. But we have to keep in mind that we do have a standard of practice because mm -hmm. we are under the state government and those were written and they're in this notebook. Thank you. Excellent point. Yep, excellent. Okay, well, that's all. <laughs> I will get the notebooks in. I guess it can be brought up at the next um, at, at the next meeting um, after everyone has a chance to review the documents and see what's in the manual and um, then perhaps a better discussion can take place and several people can, it sounds like Haley certainly should be part of any kind of reviewing committee and Chad wants, of course, to be part of that, so. And we can do it virtually, Mila, if you want. I'm happy to set up Zooms, you know, whatever works sure. for you. Okay. Um, Chad, also on your, on the second page of your agenda, um, Chad had talked about a mass council on aging training which I thought sounded like an excellent program, which is taking place on Wednesday, June 15th in Agawam. And I would encourage um, a couple of members to attend that meeting. Um, it's, if you look at, at the um, second page of your agenda, it shows it's comprised of three elements. And I think serving, um, identifying underserved populations and an action plan to reach out to them could be very valuable to um, any council member. So look at that. If anybody needs money to attend that meeting, I expect we can approach the um, Friends of the Emmer Senior Center because they oftentimes will subsidize or help people with conference fees and anything to improve their education. There's also um, a listing of a, a little book of boards, which um, is available, I know, on Amazon. So if anyone is so inspired, I would encourage you to read that as well. Do we have any takers for the um, meeting um, in Agawam? You can register. Um, I, I, I gave you the link for registration, so keep that, keep that with you. And sometime last, last month, um, Chad, you suggested changing the leadership structure of the council. And I wonder if you wanted to say anything more about that, how each well, member could be more actively engaged. Oh, well, I, I thought you meant my suggestion that um, the three positions be um, elected in a rotating way so they're not all on and off at the same time, a whole new group, that they have some continuity by at least one or two members. Um, people who serve, serve, I don't know what it would be. Uh, three months of peace, uh, January, February, March for one, the other one, March, April, and May, and the third one, June, July, and August, or whatever you would, would however you would do it. Mm -hmm. Is that what you meant? Uh, yeah, that is, I wasn't sure that's what you meant. And um, I, when I hear that, I find that it might make it difficult for Haley to have um, people changing off all the time and, and working on on the agenda or whatever items need attention rather well, than think of it the way I think of it is the exact opposite that all of a sudden people are brand new to it all three of them at once and uh, everybody takes uh, a little while to get caught up whereas if um, I think the select board uh, before the charter changed it had select select persons um, in that kind of uh, mode so that the old ones could mentor the new ones on and, um, you know, 
in turn, um, they would mentor the next. Well, it's true, mentorship has been a problem on the council, um, partly because of, of um, having so many new members at the same time. Uh, how long do we serve? Uh, how long is your, uh, how long am I on once the, once the town manager appoints me? How long am I on for? Three year term. Three. All right, so, so if, if they took uh, one year during that time, um you know they would be in in uh one year they would have a whole year where they would be a brand new guy who doesn't know what's going on the second year they'd be expected to pick up a piece and they could help a new person coming but they'd still have a uh one of those three people that's been there three years mm -hmm. and then in the last year um you know it would be up to them to really uh carry the ball and and nurture the two new ones uh, I didn't mean month by month like I just gave. I just couldn't come up with a three, three, um, uh, uh, what do you call it? A binomial of three. But if it's three years, uh, a whole year, it's just a suggestion. Um, my real reason for putting up that, um, that um, Massachusetts Council on Aging Training is because it talks about helping boards develop team, a uh -huh. sense of team, how to work together. And they also have another module on leadership development. To me, it's not about the individuals, it's that everybody on the team picks up a piece. Uh -huh. The team is the leader. Uh, you know, my parents' generation, we had to have somebody stand up in front and, um, you know, be a leader and a, and a motivator and all that. I don't think a hierarchy works today. Most of us uh, came through a social uh, revolution uh, 40, 50 years ago that sort of got rid of the hierarchy and created teams. Uh, anyway, that's why I got, that's why I forwarded that to um, the board members that I have, um, emails for. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think a training makes a lot of sense. I also think it could be helpful to, as a COA, go and meet with other councils on aging or listen to their meetings, you know, kind of see how other people are doing it. Um, or, you know, again, if we want to sponsor an activity at the senior center, we could certainly do it in the evening. We could do like a ice cream or pizza, we could, as a group, as a COA board, volunteer all at one event. And that's a really great way to get to know people. It's also a great way to get to know the community. Um, I think I think it would be good to have more voices on the leadership team. I think a year sounds like a more reasonable number. Um, you know, it really takes a while to get the hang of what you're doing and then be good and then kind of know the direction that you want to go in. So a year makes sense to me, but I'm not sure I sense a lot of trepidation on the, the board right now to step up into leadership. And I don't know if forcing people to, to all take part of that is the, always the way to go. You know, some people just are not comfortable being in that type of role. Mm -hmm. So just to play devil's advocate. Any other comments from other members? Well, that puts you in a difficult position, Haley, mm -hmm. without having um, someone. It does. Work. And actually, I, I kind of will have to go back and circle in with the town manager because I'm not sure how meetings will function if we don't have a facilitator. So that is something to keep in mind that if, you know, if we don't have a leader, we could potentially not have someone to run the meeting and then that might not be a monthly occurrence. Um, but I will definitely double check with them once we uh, once I get into the office tomorrow. Uh -huh. Okay. And Greg, you had a comment. Again, it's a good thing to um, delve into, even as we delve into the uh, manual. Um, this coincides with that. What coincides with that? are looking at the the tenure 
and uh, of each of the members of the team. Uh, and I think that that really flows into looking at why we exist, our, our policies, as well as our mission. What is our mission? Uh, is our, our mission, is it is it remaining the same? These are things, this is a good time for all of this to come up. Mm -hmm. But as as uh, Rosemary said once in a conversation, it's it's feeling like a critical time because it, it it's calling for leadership that won't be there mm -hmm. just to operate the organization. And we the question becomes that of whether we will have. Uh, uh, some temporary way of following through on on, on leadership. How how are we going to operate? Yeah. And uh, Greg, I know that you have your hand up. Greg. Yes. Uh, my question is, uh, how are we going to uh, choose uh, leadership? Is that going to be by vote? Or is that by consensus or just somebody volunteering? Uh, I'm not sure how, what the, so, uh, the process is. Are we looking for somebody to volunteer or are we looking to vote on the two individuals? I, I believe it's gonna be at least two, right? The co-chairs. Or are we gonna do it by consensus? I'm, I'm not sure Good what to expect in terms of, uh, of deciding um, you know, uh, whether somebody's going to volunteer or whether they're going to vote on them or what they have to do if they're interested in uh, or willing uh, to uh, take on this role or these roles. Well, that's a good question, Greg. And it, it used to be that we would have a nominating committee for um, to put forth new uh, people in leadership roles. Um, because the council had been short of members for so long, and we have four new members since the beginning of the year, it's very difficult <laughs> to, to have a nominating committee and, and find uh, one of the old me older members to be um, approached for leadership role. Um, and so we did approach a few people, ask them about one has to be willing to be a leader. We can't just appoint them. And so we did ask a few people if they were willing to step into that position and did not get any positive responses. So that's where we're at. It's generally a volunteer. Volunteer with a follow-up vote. Yeah. And then, and then, of course, voted by the board. So that's where we're at now. And um, is that on this month's agenda? Yeah. To just look into what we do about leadership going forward was on the agenda. No, yeah. is the vote is the vote on this month or when is that? There is no vote. There's no person that is willing to step forward and be a leader. What month does the leadership position in get June? To? June. In Thank June. you. I'm sorry. Okay. Which is this month, correct? Yes, that's yes. Correct. okay. Yeah. Well, I think it might be a really good idea if we took, if we came to a consensus that it might to pause our July meeting. I think that you know we the existing board needs to kind of think about. Am I a good fit for leadership? Is that something that I would be willing to, you know, try, um, you know, without having memorized the bylaws? You know, maybe we could do a six-month, you know, leadership position, and then we could reevaluate. You know, again, we're going to be onboarding new, a new person, um, and that person might be a very good leader. Who knows? Um, but I think at the very least, we kind of need to to gather ourselves together and just think about, you know, what is the direction we want to go in, um, yeah. and you know, and I would be in favor of just giving that month and then, you know, again, maybe that'd be a good time for board members to reach out to other councils and just see you know, what are other people doing. 
um, you know, in other towns that are nearby. Terry? Are there any of the applicants who have applied for the COA interested in the leadership positions? Um, it, that wouldn't be clear on the application form. It could no. certainly be a question that is asked in the interview process, though. Okay. Just curious. I, I, I think that uh, somewhere in a discussion, either um, our last discussion or some conversation in between, it was suggested that new people might get uh, a sense of what's going on before they step into a leadership mm -hmm. position. Mm -hmm. Um, I, maybe what we need is to get an interim leader for X number of months. Mm -hmm. um, and then it, it, it is quite, it's a, quite a large expectation uh, to have of somebody who doesn't know the organization and they're thrust into a position where they are asked to help lead it. That's a great idea. I mean, I would definitely be supportive of that. I think, you know, if, if you're kind of on the fence and you're not sure that you want to do it, interim is really great. You know, you can try it out. Potentially, if this new person wanted that position, you could work with them as a mentor. Um, yeah, I think that's great, Jacqueline. As the triple right. contrarian that I am, I was going to say the opposite and um, say, let's stick with the schedule. Let's stick with June as we you know, have for so many years. And I'd step up for one of the slots. I don't do it um, automatically. I do it um, with a caveat or two um, that other people begin to put in um, actual hours each week between meetings on work of the council. Um, that other people step up as I am doing right now and take a piece of, of the action. That other people commit themselves to uh, the organization and do some work. Reorganization means that we have to do everything at once. It means we have to, um, you know, turn inward and do a lot of board development and work on the organization itself. But we also have the um, survey that's come out and that can develop a strategic plan that we can put our shoulders together to that wheel. It's what everybody's been saying. What does the people, what do the elders of Amherst need? What do they want? What are their likes? What are their dislikes? We can do internal development of our organization by focusing on trying to meet those needs and, you know, developing a strategic plan. But at any rate, um, I'll stick my head up. Uh, usually leaders have their heads cut off when they stick them up, but I'll give it a shot. <laughs> Okay. We promise not to cut yours off. <laughs> yeah. So I'm I'm saying you're you're gonna take a leadership role for an interview. I'll, I'll give I'll give it a try. I would really like to see that rotating thing though, because mm -hmm. you know yeah. next June it's gonna be the same thing all over again. Uh, mm -hmm. Unless people from the committee say that they want to be in one of those three positions, whatever they're called, I don't even know. Um, you know, it's it's like brand new all over again. We have to have some kind of continuity. Yeah. Well, I will say that um, I did approach Dennis Vandal a time back, and he said that he would be willing to be vice chair. And um, Dennis, are you still in that uh, mindset? <laughs> Uh, yes, I am. However, I, I really would like to make it very, very clear that I'm willing to assist someone, uh, because to be perfectly honest about it, and, and as everyone knows, I'm a brand new member, and I have to become acquainted with the issues, and also everyone that I see in, in the thumbnail on the right side of my screen. Uh, so uh, to assist would be one thing. To uh, to lead specifically I, is is entirely premature for me. Okay. So uh, yes, I'd be willing to assist. Okay, thank you. And Christina, you had something to say. And Greg, go ahead, Christina. Yeah. Um, what I want to say is that I did meet with. Um, I met with someone from a remote town to find out how 
they structure their um, Council on Aging. And that person explained to me that, the, that they, because they're so small, they really don't have a structure as we do with a, uh, a Haley, director of the center, and that the council uh, is the one really running everything. The council really runs the senior programs. The whole board runs them. Mm. And so that, that, that us going to different places to see how they're structured, that's okay if we're gonna pick the right type of, mm. uh, you know, like I would say perhaps Northampton, yeah. a visit yeah. to them because they have, mm -hmm. we have similarities. So we really have to go with people who have similarities and not spread ourselves thin when it comes to seeing how the board has developed themselves. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. And Greg. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna to have to leave shortly. Sorry about that. I do wanna make sure that we move the, uh, my agenda items on open meeting. Um, to uh, next month if we could. But if, uh, if that uh, suggestion that we can do a uh, six month, uh, I would you know, volunteer to co-chair with uh, Chad for that six month, uh, but I can't go into next year uh, if that's helpful. So I just throw that out yeah. there. That's Thank great. You. That's great, excellent. Um, I think then before, it I'm sorry about your agenda item because I think it is an important one, but I think the message in the second page of the document of the minutes or the agenda explains pretty well <laughs> what- um, We don't need a special meeting. Yeah, not for that. Um, but uh, we need to vote if um, Chad is willing to step forward for a period of several months to be um, to lead the council, um, we need to vote. And I would say all in favor, uh, raise your hand. I'll say aye. Okay. All right. And no, any opposed? Okay. And all in favor of. Um, Dennis Vandal being vice chair and working with Chad. How about if we add three months to that and then at, at three months they can make some decision and then return to the board or the council? Uh, uh, probably. Um, how do people feel about that? Do you agree with that? Three months? That might be a good idea. Christina, did you have something to say? Um, yes, I wanted to say that I, well, Chad is saying that we are supposed to be putting in hours and working uh, on behalf of our board, that I would be willing to contact and, and find out about the structure of the Northampton Senior Center, who I see as our equal mm -hmm. uh, in terms of size and scope, you know, mm -hmm. And um, I would do that. I would find out and uh, contact them and meet and speak to them and find out uh, to help our board with its development. Excellent. Much appreciated. Um, and then just so I'm clear, so are we doing a leadership team of Greg and Chad with Dennis as vice chair? It sounds that way. It sounds that, so I think we need to make one more vote in that case. Yeah. So. Um, Unless you want to uh, well, rescind Greg, your author, Greg. Greg, Greg <laughs> did you, did, Greg, did you intend to be working with Chad or pick up after Chad is finished? I thought it was Cole, so I would be mm -hmm. with him. Okay, okay. So um, all in favor of Greg as a co-chair to work with Chad as a co-chair. Say aye or raise your hand. Aye. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Anybody opposed? 
And uh, Dennis, once again, we never voted on Dennis, all in favor of Dennis as a vice chair. Any opposed? So it would be a uh, trio. Yes. <laughs> any and any opposition? No opposition. Okay. No opposition. We we'll have a new leadership team for the next three months. Will be uh, Chad and Greg as co-chair and Dennis as vice chair. And you will work closely with Haley. And um, I will get the um, as much of the man. I will get the manuals to the senior center and try and scan the documents for those who do not have who prefer that method. First time all men in the history. Of okay. Amherst. Oh, wow. <laughs> Impressed. You know, that popped up in my head. I didn't know it was the first time in the history, but I said, hmm. <laughs> but then, then, too, ours was all female. Uh, so yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not unusual. <laughs> no, that's true. <laughs> and Terry, did you have a question? Yes, um, I just want to reiterate that Haley does the agenda and the council helps her or adds to it or General, generally the chair had been doing the agenda and Haley would add to it, but um, that can be worked out between the two co chairs and Haley. Okay. So, yeah, it, it, it would seem that the co-chairs would do it and share and add anything that the director has to add because it's giving her another major responsibility. Yeah, yeah, it's better. Yes, I agree. Okay, actually time is really getting away from us and we do have to, um, did everyone get a chance to read the minutes and if there are any cor no corrections, I ask for a vote of approval. Um, um, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I had some corrections. Um, could I ask that it be delayed? Um, I, I forget what the correction is. I don't have it in front. I don't have the minutes in front of me. Somebody misstated something that I said. That's all. Okay. Well, they can, be, they can be approved at the next meeting. So Thank you. we'll table that. Thank you. Um, and briefly. can I add something now, Chad, I emailed them to you a month ago. If you had a change, you should have emailed me right away. No, I, I would bring it to this meeting. I, I do things quite differently than, um, yes, uh, I know what, that. what some think about, um, uh, for instance, the agenda is formed by all the members of the board and not just the president. Um, yeah. Yeah. For yeah. instance, um, any changes to the minutes would be approved uh, at yeah. the meeting when yeah. we vote to approve yeah. the minutes. Yeah. Um, anyway, that's just uh, a little different. Uh, no, and Chad's right. That really should happen in a public forum where you know everyone has the opportunity to discuss that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I, I <laughs> Chad as our parliamentarian. <laughs> <laughs> okay um we have to um theoretically we should end at 6 <clears throat> so um linda can you very briefly give us a brief <laughs> announcement i will be sparse but i, I just want to say in in colleagueship i have great uh, sympathy, empathy, understanding of the leadership and all the transition issues you're going through, we're going through similar things. So we share that. And yeah, I thought you did a great job in your creativity and coming up with a, a way to move forward. And I applaud you. I applaud you. Okay. What I wanted to just share is an invitation, first of all. Amherst Neighbors is doing its first outdoor, in person picnic and event. Uh, post COVID, you know, not post COVID, wherever we are in COVID, <laughs> on July 18th um, from three to six at the Mill River uh, Park, you know, uh, conservation area. And I hope you'll come. Um, you know, we're going to make it a festive community event and games and 
icebreakers and food and everything. And, and you'll get a more formal invitation, you know, and flyers and stuff in, as in a couple of weeks. But I, I wanted to personally invite you. And um, the second is a question which I have, let's see, it's 627 on my computer. Um, we're actually looking to apply um, submit proposals for a couple of grants that are focused on transportation. And I don't know if you saw them, Haley, you know, the DOT one, and then there's the healthy aging. And we thought we're gonna, we're gonna go for it. But what I wanted to ask from you, I mean, we have our thoughts about what we're gonna um, focus on, but, you know, between your expertise and the COA, do you see areas that we can be supportive to you and supplement or complement the transportation that you're where you are now in terms of providing that we could somehow you know present this as a you know a team that we're supporting you know we're supporting our community we're supporting the senior center and at the same time expanding transportation possibilities Danny, yes. you know. I definitely think that I, I would love to talk with you a little bit more about that maybe we can set up another meeting okay. and you know certainly I don't know the deadlines off the top of my head but it you know we could put that before the board to write a support letter for your application that's you know, those are all very possible okay I'll call you tomorrow have some thoughts about that anything that you yeah. see from the yeah. perspective I, I, and I think one of the things that might be in the back of your mind as you prepare to come together to do that, uh, the places where there is a conspicuous absence of transportation as it currently operates, which would be evenings and weekends. Yes, yes. <laughs> We, yeah, and that's exact. Thank you. That's really helpful because that's what we're thinking is how do we expand that too? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. And okay. um, Dick Yorga, if you're still hanging in there, did you have any announcements to make from the friend? Dick Yorga? He you're took muted. it off uh, mute for a second. Yeah. You're, you're muted, Dick. Yeah, I guess maybe he's not there. Any oh. Okay. Yeah, I'm here. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, in my immutability, the um, as you as you well know, the friends have started the beginning of the long process of uh, advocating and culminating in the creation of a new modern senior center to meet the growing needs of the growing senior population in Amherst. And one of the many things we're doing is we have invited the town council as individuals to come to the senior center and get a personalized tour, not just a walk by or a quick saunter through the lobby, but to get a personalized tour so they can see which of the rooms are available for senior use and more important, which ones are not. Yes. And um, I had difficulty signing in to this meeting, even though I started 10 minutes early, Zoom want, tried to reinvent the wheel on me. So uh, forgive me if, if you've already answered this question amongst yourselves, but I think simultaneously and ideally before all the members of the town council come accomplish that personalized walkthrough and learning and understanding just what the seniors and Haley have to work with. I think it's yeah. incumbent, incumbent upon each and every one of you to do the same. Yeah. Because you're yeah. the ones that are advocating for us, representing the seniors in town government and throughout the community. And you can't do that if you haven't walked the walk. So uh, I'm here today to ask those of you that have not taken advantage of that opportunity to please please do so. Uh, Haley can um, make arrangements for you uh, because it's, it's critical that you understand what you're working with. Thank you. Good point. And let me just say one thing really quick, which is that I think it's really important that this board <laughs> has a very healthy relationship with the friends group. You know, as, as much as we advocate here, and it's very important, the friends are, you know, 
they pay for a lot. Um, they support a wide number of our programs, of our office supplies. Um, so I think it's really important for us to have this dialogue. And I certainly want to see updates uh, at each meeting from the friends. And you know, by virtue of being new, I can ask this without any judgment. I don't know who, who here has taken a tour of the senior center, because I honestly am not sure. I know a lot of folks are new. Um, so I just I just want to get like maybe a thumbs up if you have seen the senior center before, thumbs down if you haven't. So there might be a couple people who need a little bit of, to of a tour. I gave two tours during the open house, one directed by one of the select women. I mean, um, Shao Lin, the town counselor, and to a couple, mm -hmm. and one uh, by an individual. Mm -hmm. And all I wanted to add to Dick's comment is, it's how you say what you say, as well as showing them around. Mm -hmm. I'd like to second what he has to say and recommend that they do, anyone who's going to give the tour, do a walkthrough with another person and get critiqued. Um, something like that is very valuable. I agree. And talking points are good. And we should all be on the same page in terms of what we're advocating for. You know, we don't want one person saying one thing and somebody else saying another. Um, you know, it's really important to be consistent. And importantly, you don't want to be asked a question that you should be able to answer and can't. So we, need, all of us need to do our homework. And Chad is right, it's not just what you say, but how you say it. That's one of my yeah. principal values. <laughs> well, yeah. we, we all have each other's emails and um, you can, anyone that would like a tour, I'm happy to, to do that with them and Haley would be mm -hmm. and, um, who else is familiar, really familiar with the senior center? Um, Terry knows the senior center well. So mm -hmm. give any one of us an, uh, an email and make an arrangement if you're not familiar. And of course, at some point, we may be able to meet in person at the Bang Center. And then that would also really help. <laughs> you know, this is, this is a really good format, but it's not totally conducive to what we want to be doing. Exactly. Yeah. OK, we should. Um, uh, adjourn uh, when uh, would we propose the next meeting, the next Council on Aging meeting, if it were the second Thursday of the month, that would put us in, let me get my calendar. We put it uh, Thursday, July 14th. July 14th, is anybody um, French? <laughs> Isn't that French Independence Day or something of that sort? Um, Thursday, July 14th at um, five o'clock. Is everyone able, able to make that meeting? Okay. I won't be here. Uh -huh. yeah. Oh, you'll miss it, Terry? Yeah. I'm going um, to we'll take our minutes. What, oh, does, do people want to move it to the next week? Would that work better? Yeah, the 21st works for me. How about yeah. everyone else? Either okay. of them, I'm going to show up late. What's that, Chad? Either either one, I'll show up late. Uh, what okay. they did, what they do, did we decide? Uh, the we 21st of July. I'm sorry? July 21st. Yeah, I'm okay. Okay. Yeah. Good. And Greg will put you on the agenda for July 21st <laughs> or you will put yourself on the agenda <laughs> uh, I, I do have one other comment if I could before we uh, yes leave. Uh, I uh, would like to thank you and Haley for that presentation uh, I did watch the recording uh, of your presentation and the other folks at the outreach committee meeting in May. Oh, right. uh, I, and, I, and I think that anyone, uh, especially the new members who haven't seen that, uh, that presentation uh, should take a look at it. I, I think it gives a good foundation of uh, what we're facing right now. Uh, and it was an excellent job and was, I think, good participation. And uh, I think there was also a lot of support from that committee when you were done. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you, Greg. Okay, thank you.
Yes, thank you. Excellent. Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> I would like to thank, um, I would like to thank everybody, even as we go through transition, not just leaving us in limbo. And I also would like to uh, thank Christina for being quite candid in her observations as a new member and sort of uh, putting a little fire under us to look at ourselves, take an inward look and come back with something that's, that's more solid. Um, and, and we have engaged in that, I think, quite, quite a bit today. Mm -hmm. The discussion and people making commitments or at least volunteering so as not to leave it on anyone to work but for it to be an us and not them. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And thank and thank you, Rosemary. <laughs> yes. Yes. Thank you very much, Rosemary. Okay. Well, I thank you all and for just yeah. stepping in and doing what needs to be done. And this is a good meeting, a good discussion. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Thank you so much. Okay. Enjoy the summer. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Rosemary, for everything. Yeah, thank you very, very much. Bye -bye.